Hey everyone, we are going on, I think, day five. Um, so the last time we talked, I was doing a vinegar soaking bath to kind of get the hide, um, to get some of the swelling down and to get it all prepped. So I let it soak for about a day and a half. I was gonna do it yesterday, but I noticed that the hide was still a little bit swollen. You kind of want to look for that sweet spot of it being just a little bit swollen, um, but also not swollen like it was when you were doing all the fleshing and the graining, taking the hair off and such. Um, so today I am getting ready to do the last um, fleshing. So I'm going to be doing the flesh side. Um, so some of the tools I use, I have this, which... I'm not even sure what it is, but I use um, this round head and I kind of use it just to scrape, which is really good, especially when you're doing bigger hides and you put your hide on a frame. This is awesome for that. Um, when I'm doing more smaller hides or hides that have um, kind of tricky places, I just use a scraper. This one's pretty old, but I just like it because it has kind of a sharp edge and you kind of want to have to get in there. I'll show you what I mean by that in a little bit. Um, so this is kind of the setup that I have for all of it. This is literally just a box that my partner made me. As you can tell, I'm close to our bush line so that I can throw whatever scraps, excess pieces of meat or anything in the bush, let the animals get at it. So this is the hide. Um, so as you can tell, the thickness, it's not too thick. Um, so this is the skin side. It's really nice and smooth. We do have some scrapes here. It must have been from when, um, you know, Maybe it was from the animal was injured or whatever. So there's a few nicks, which is completely fine. Um, this is the hole that was actually where it was shot at. And as you can tell, just from working it, it actually got pretty big. So after this step, we will be doing the drying and everything. And once it's dry, we put it in a deer brain bath and then we'll sew this hole up to tan it all. So it's going to be a nice um piece of leather i'm really excited about this piece um the goal when you're doing your soaking and your stripping is to try to get it at its most pure form so you want it as white as you can um so i'm gonna flip it over so this is the side we're gonna be working on today as you can tell um these are just all of the impurities so when you're soaking it and vinegar and potassium hydroxide all of that they're killing the bacteria that's actually in the hide so it doesn't go rotten um when you first like the first few days so the first few days you're doing your um working on your hide it's gonna stink you're gonna smell like a deer that's why some people use gloves some people are just like just embrace the stink i've done that a few times but let me tell you it's hard to get off of you um so i do use gloves especially in the cold um god is trying to keep warm because you don't know how long you'll be outside working on um working on your hide so when you're soaking and stripping and soaking and stripping you're basically just getting the hide at its most neutralized purest form it's purest state meaning there's no bacteria in it so when i showed you the hide the flesh side when you see the dirt and the brown that's actually all the impurities the bacteria the you know dirt anything that was in the deer's skin is coming out so what we're doing today is scraping that last layer off um it's not too strenuous um i'm hoping i can get a good video to show you guys what it looks like um, this is the last stripping before we bathe it in deer brain and get it ready to actually start tanning and it'll start looking like leather.
So I'm pretty much done with the last graining. Um, as you can see, like some of the fibers are still on here. Um, if you're finding some of the fibers are pretty stubborn, um, like you move it, like you could see this one's kind of moving back and forth. That's okay because once you get on, after it dries, you give it a deer brain bath, you soak it in the eggs. Um, you'll be able to start hand um, stretching and all of these little fibers will come off. The main thing you want to do is when you're scraping, you don't want it to have any of these like black chunky bits when you first start you'll know what i'm talking about you'll have like black clumpiness on the edge of your blade so what you're doing is when you're scraping it you shouldn't have like any more big black chunks like see you're scraping it and there's nothing on my spatula so that means it's good you just really want to kind of mess up the membrane structure of the hide so next i am gonna get ready to so next i'm gonna get ready to hang it to dry um word of caution if you live around a place where there's a bunch of dogs especially res dogs i actually have lost about four of my hides this season to res dogs and it's just because i wasn't hanging up high enough i don't know if they made some sort of like pyramid at night or something but even when i thought it was high enough they still got it somehow um, so this one's pretty small. I can easily hang this up in a tree and try to hang it in a place where not a lot of the elements will get to it. If you have a shed or a garage, perfect place to hang this up. Um, I mean, if you have a big enough, um, porch, I would even hang it up there. That's where I'm going to hang mine up. Um, because you want it to dry to where it is very, very stiff. You want it completely completely dry before you give it a brain bath um so yeah so hang it up in a place where no animals will get to it no weather elements will get to it and you want to keep it completely completely dry it should be stiff kind of like rawhide it's basically at the rawhide stage right now so um it may take depending how big your hide is um Usually my average medium size, um, when I say medium size, I mean like a bigger doe, an average size buck, a smaller buck. Those are like medium size hides. Um, if you have a smaller doe, those are the smaller hides. Or if you have a pretty big buck, like those are the larger hides. Um, it can range. It can take like one day, two days, three days. Um, I've had big hides that take four days. So depending on how big your hide is depends on how long you have to dry it, but you want it completely stiff, which I'll show you in the next step. Um, so thank you. Hey everyone. We are going on day, I'm not even sure. I think it's maybe day seven. About working on this for a week so our hide is nice and dry you can even see it on the edges um, so what we are going to be doing today is working on brain soaking so if you have fresh or frozen deer brain um, make sure it's unthawed and add one cup of hot water to it. And what you're gonna do is you can use a potato masher or you can use your hands and get in there and make sort of like a paste. Once you have that paste, add about, um, about three gallons of bath temperature water, meaning it's gotta be hot enough for you to be able to stick your hands in it. If it's too hot, then it's too hot for the hide and everything will kind of break down. But you just want it warm enough to um, really have the brain soak into the hide and to get every fiber and to every pore and this is what will make the hide soft it's the softening process if you do not have deer brain or you don't have enough um, I would say half a brain for a small hide um, one brain for about a medium hide and then you may need about two brains for larger and any like moose or elk hides that you're doing. 
if you don't have any eggs makes a great substitute so you'll just be a dozen eggs and then add your three gallons of bath temperature water so when you completely saturate the hide's going to be pretty stiff but what you're going to do is kind of massage the brain or your eggs into the hide as best as you can um, you can leave it anywhere for 20 minutes if you have a really really small hide like what i'll be doing or overnight if you have anything larger than a medium hide um, so and then after that process what you'll do is to hang it to dry again but this time we're going to make sure that it's just a little bit damp to the touch we don't want it completely dry if it's completely dry you'll have to soften it again we want it not soaking wet but just damp to where we can start our hand stretching and um, doing the stretching part of the process before we start smoking it i just came in from the cold um so when you are soaking the hide into your brain or egg mixture you really want to make sure you massage it in um, the more you massage it in, the more you'll realize that your hide becomes soft and loose again. And then that's when you know it's okay to leave it to set. So like I said, um, for the small piece wool I'm doing, I'm only going to let it soak for about maybe two hours. If you're doing any much larger hides, you want to really make sure it's saturated overnight. And then you'll take it out, kind of wring it out, and hang it over a tree branch, a limb, something set it up to where you can hang it over to dry and you want to keep checking it until it's damp and then once it's damp you kind of have to move quickly with the stretching process so in this process this is where you will typically see some people using a um, hide frame where it looks like a big frame and then the hide is stretched around it and you can use a pole you can use your even your fing your hands, if you have something, um, a small hide, you can just continually stretch it with your hands. The best kind of demonstration I can show you before I get into it is if you ever have a lacrosse stick or anything, and usually people use, um, it's usually like a lacrosse ball on top of a pole and it's taped down and they're stretching out the lacrosse, lacrosse mesh that's the best description I can use, but I'll show you guys later on. I just wanted to let you know that after it's done soaking and it dries, and once you feel it's damp, you kind of have to move quick quickly because if you let it dry without proper stretching it, it will become stiff and hardened and you won't be able to soften it again. So this is kind of the step where you really have to focus and pay attention to it. It can... Um, you'll notice it's ready to be stretched and ready to come out of the solution and start drying. When um, it's soft again, you can feel, um, when you can easily stretch it is when you know it's able to start drying. So here is the hide. It is um still a little bit damp which is what you want um you can see it's ready to start stretching which i'm getting ready to do um so the reason why you want to work with damp hide you can tell it's damp see my fingers are poking through it um the reason why you want to work with damp hide is because the reason you want to work with damp hide is because deer hide actually kind of has like a glue in it so when you're stretching and everything you're kind of stopping that glue from forming um the more you stretch it the more you work at it the more soft it's gonna be um in all honesty um so using your hands so literally just grabbing it and pulling it apart um this is also where if you have a bigger hide you Put it on a hide frame like I talked in a little while back about how to get started um, so what I'm gonna do is start stretching it you really kind of can't put this step aside or start it and then stop it you have to work on it so make sure you have pretty much the rest of your day 
available to do this. Um, another thing I wanted to suggest was Say hello everyone. Um, so this next last part of the process is um, pretty simple in terms of um, the process we've been doing. I am going to kind of do or sh uh, talk about the way I usually do it because for this hide, I am trying a little bit something different since it is my last hide of the season. So once you stretch it, like I stated before, you're going to stretch it and continue to stretch it and work on it. Um, even a few, like I like using a cable, so I tie a cable or a chain and I just rub um, the hide um, around that and kind of just really work it, try to irritate the fibers um, until it is completely dry. Once it is dry, you are going to sew up or you can use wood glue. Wood glue also works too. Um, sew up any holes or glue up any holes and you are going to kind of create a uh, sack. So the other thing you'll have to get is either an old pair of jeans that you can turn into a skirt to sew on or uh, a canvas would work best. And for the smoking part, there's a few different, there's a few different options you can do. You can um, dig your own pit, use your own fireplace. Um, you know, if it's above ground, it's also fine too, as long as you can, um, hang the hide high enough so that the skirt part, which I'll show you a diagram, which is awesome and more references that I use, um, isn't anywhere close to the fire. This is one of the steps where you are going to start it and you aren't going to leave your spot until you are finished. Um, wood, as long as it is very dry, wood will work. Um, I've heard, uh, there's a few different types of wood you can use. Um, maple, cedar, pine, as long as it's really dry. Um, the color will depend on how long you smoke it. So usually smoking the first side, so like I'll show you in the diagram, you'll make your first sack and you'll smoke that for maybe about one to two hours, depending on the color you want. The longer you smoke, the darker it's going to be. And then you'll flip it inside out and then you'll smoke it again. At this point, so when you start your fire and you get it going, you don't want it to be up in flames you want the fire to just be very very smoky kind of like right at the end where all the smoke is coming up um that is when you start smoking it and you just kind of want to tend to it once it's covered it will continue and it's best to not leave any big holes or any big gaps because you want it um very very closed off so that the smoke literally fills up the hide so um, that's the part that is pretty simple. Um, I will show you a diagram in a second to further explain. Um, so I just wanted to talk about some resources that I use. A lot of the resources that, um, when I was younger, it was hide tanning camps that I would attend to with my grandmother. That's what I would, um... That's where I kind of picked up the traditional ways, but 
um, this is a great reference. It's Deer Skins into Buckskins um, by Matt Richards. I have the second edition. This is awesome. As you can see, I use it a lot. I kind of wrote down every step. His steps go about 10 steps. I love this book. I incorporate this a lot into um, my method of high tanning. Like I said, everybody's different. Um, everyone has their own family traditional way. Everyone has their own, own new way. Um, that's why I am talking more or less the last part of the high tanning, the tanning process.